Hi, I'm Finley, and I'm Chucky's friend to the end. Howdy freaking ho. So, episode a six. Basically, not particularly the uh, the one where the doll version of Chucky shows his face often, but certainly an awesome one. Uh, so how does this episode start off? Well, it starts off with a moving car. Uh, and out comes that guy is a person who has a gun on him. Uh, but not but not just a no one person, two persons, a male and a female. But turns out it isn't just a male and a female. It is none other than Andy Barkley and Kyle. Oh, oh my god. Oh, wait, then how did wait then how do you, then how did Andy get out of the insane asylum? We don't know. Let's find out, shall we? Anyway, they 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 uh they're pretending to be like uh like uh uh I don't know agents or something or basically uh getting information out of people ho people's homes and about their age and appear about their age and members of the family. All I'm saying is Andy's suspicious because he knows that there's a good guy doll all in the house and he ain't far off because as there is a good guy doll in the house, but not just any good guy doll, and not just Chucky, but one of the dolls from Cult of Chucky. Oh my god! It's it's burned hand Chucky. He melted hand Chucky. He, oh my god. Uh, and his name is Charlie. Like, like Tommy from Child's Play 2, who there's like a look, hesitates to speak. But then he says, Ch Ch Charlie, like, and then, he's, then he tries to pull a knife at the little girl. But Andy, he puts the doll to the ground, and, and Kyle shoots, oops, that doll dead. And leaving nothing but a giant trail of blood. Oh my god, that's gonna be real. And the family is, like, terrified and stuff. I wonder what was their reaction when they realized, wait, why is there blood coming out of that doll? Oh. Well, anyway... Anyway, those two are driving off. They were talking about, you know, how they could get right out, but they can't. And how that girl would end up. Now, oh, whatever, Kai, whatever. Andy ended up like that, and he turned out just fine. Look at him. He's a bounty hunter for Chucky. And then Kyle, he was questioning Andy, like, why the hell did he have a, have a Chucky head in his cabinet for four years? Well, personally, I always thought it was like, like what Andy was about to say, you know? I mean, for years, Chucky has always haunted Andy. He is always like, he's always gone away with murdering people he cared about. Out, And here's his time to get a little payback. I bet that's the reason why he had Chucky for like four years, you know? Because he just wanted to hear that doll scream. In payback. But at the same time, have a bit of mutual respect because in Cult of Chucky, he just lets him have a smoke of the cig. But then after when Chucky was acting like a dick, he decided to put him on fire. He screams better when he's on fire. Uh, anyway, and then it cuts to uh, Jake, Ate Liv, and Junior and Devin in their classroom where they're learning about mating animals. And then the uh, teacher... Gets called up by Devin's mom because she's under arrest. Devin tries to tell her, but her mom doesn't want to hear it. Right? They try to defend her, telling her it wasn't her. But the adults, they're just not. They're just not buying it. Anyway, they all try to wonder where Chucky is. Is like was Tommy just a normal doll? But no. Oh, but then they all they all talked about Andy Barkley. They all say that how they can be, he can be connected to all, how he can be the key to stopping Chucky. Anyway, back at the hotel at the last episode, Tiff is trying to get the uh, guy that they murdered out of there. Uh, while Chucky, aka Chucky possessed Nika, is like, you know, chatting. Point is, Tiff gets fed up, fed up with his sass and, and just smacks a bit of blood on her or him. him and then the red stuff. The red light on the cam the camera turns red once again, and Nika is back to being Nika. 
yeah. Anyway, 1987, Hackensack. Charles and Tiff are buying I a used car from his old salesman guy. They love it because they found out now that the previous owners died in the car by decapitation. Should they take it? It And then Charles, he decides, instead of paying the guy, he decides to kill him. Shocker. And this is where we get his uh, first hint of Chucky getting his hobby on, vo on voodoo. Ew. He's reading a book about voodoo. Tiff wonders, what is he doing? He's just saying it's just a new hobby. Be or some foreshadowing. <laughs> anyway, it cuts to uh, Junior's mom explaining to uh, Junior's dad about the whole... She finally explains about her secret. Turns out, you know, we all know from the last episode, she has stage four cancer and she's she's admitting it to her family. And it is not easy. I mean, I mean, I mean, how would you tell your family you 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 know, it's horrible. She tries to explain it to Junior. She ends, Junior's all worried that what he f knows about his mom. Um, and, uh, yeah, they both explain that she has cancer, and they both share a hug and an emotional, it's just, it's really not hard. It's really not easy knowing that. If I found out my mom had cancer, I don't know what I would do, okay? I would just freak out and just, anyway, uh. Wait, we cut back to Nika. She's playing poker or is it chess? I don't know. With Tiff and then Tiff, she's all all this and that. And and Nika, she's trying to pretend to be all Charles by putting on the accent. And um, but Tiff, she knows it's Nika because she stabbed because she stabbed her in the fire like ten minutes ago. Oh. Oh, and you know something? She starts developing a crush on Nika. Starts having feelings, prefers her better than Chucky, and even better yet, uh, she bought a house. She bought a house in Hackensack, and she knocks Nika out. Anyway, they live. Devin and Jake, they're both explaining. It, they're both wondering how they can get Andy, since the guy's about forty. God better help them. Them. I mean, you're teenagers, and you're trying to contact a forty-year-old man. Um, anyway, Junior comes over, explains things to her girl, explains to his girlfriend, but, you know, she's more busy on trying to Chucky, and, you know, after, you know, bullying his cousin, doing a dance of her, of his dead uncle, practically just being a bit of a bad girlfriend, and Junior has enough of her shit and dumps her, which honestly does kind of suck. Uh, for uh, you know she wants to be there for her boyfriend but she got a lot of her priorities on her shoulder for once her mom is her corrupted met politic it her uh she has a killer doll that's trying to kill her or uh, or uh, and uh quite frankly her boyfriend just dumped her so you know she's got a lot of high on priorities you know Anyway, they do manage to get in contact with him. And it turns out that man that was speaking to Jake in episode one was Andy. Oh, my God. Oh, you guys. They start chatting in how to stop him. They have so many questions. For Number one, when does Chucky come? He, You don't come looking for Chucky. Chucky comes looking for you. Anyway, he explain, anyway they explain how, they, how he killed their foster parents. Cool callbacks, you know. Oh, and then we cut to Jennifer Tilly, a.k.a. Tiff, if buying a house, and not just any house, Charles' old childhood house, the house where he murdered his mom, um, and just, wow. Oh, she's buying a place in this place. Yeah, it turns out the p person who's selling it to Jennifer Tilly, she doesn't even want an autograph. What kind of person, what kind of same person so wouldn't want an autograph from Jennifer Tilly? Whatever, the point is, is she gets pointed, she gets an oversized package. I think we all know what's in there. <coughs> she opens the hood of the car and it's Nika. Uh, she ties her up, makes out with her, and leans for her to scream. And then we cut to the teacher who's being kept at by Devin's mother. Turns out 
Turns out her fingerprints were all over the evidence of her principal. She was the last person to see the principal before she, she died. And she did have, and she's actually uh, the one to take over the school all next. Well, maybe not for long, but all I'm saying is, it is, and it turns out she's had a bad juvenile history. Oof. And then we cut to uh, Junior and his mom. She's going to go see her therapist. And then they have just, you know, a nice time. I'm hugging and just having a nice chat. Anyway, she walks out of the car and we hear Chucky laugh. Uh, she talks to her therapist about how, you know, how we only have one life and how we're going to live it. She doesn't want to get she doesn't want to get treatment because she was afraid it would interfere with her family's life. She wants to treat every moment like it's the last and she just, she's expecting whatever's going to come. She's going to accept, she's going to accept it with open arms. In other words, they're basically foreshadowing what's going to happen to her in like a couple of minutes. It's when she's texting to her husband and or is it her son? I don't know. She's looking out the window to the city, appreciating life before Chucky he grabs a cart and well a really cool effect I will say. I even love the look on the Chucky doll. That's pretty cool. Well pretty cool effect that is, but so hard hard to see a nice woman like that fall to her death F. And anyway, uh June Junior realizes what's happening and yeah, she lands th face first on on top of the car Junior was in. Oh boy. And then, you know, every, and he just screams and it cuts us to the family talking to her therapist and how she's just trying to be there for them. Huh, I like her. Anyway, uh, Jake tries to comfort Junior, telling her that it wasn't suicidal and how she didn't do this. And, and Junior just tells Jake to get the hell away out of his sight. Oh, dude, he's trying to be there for for you, okay? I get it. You're grieving over your mother. I don't know what I would do if my mom dropped dead, okay? Hey, but I wouldn't be taking it out on people who's trying to help me, okay? It's all saying they want to be there for me, I accept. Uh, but dude, don't be mean to your cousin. Anyway, then it uh, jumps to, uh, jump cuts to Devin and his mom. Devin is watching this movie. He, uh, ma. Devin's mom explains how she's going to be gone for a little bit. Curfew's the same, yada, yada, yada. And uh, then they start having an interesting chat about how, you know, how, how, you know, how he likes, how he like, how, how does he, how did she feel when she liked someone? Like how she explains how she made Devin's dad. Huh, whatever happened to Devin's dad? He's never mentioned in the show. I guess he died. It could be, could be. Anyway, she explains to her. He explains to his mom that he's gay and he wants to be with Jake, and and it's really sweet. She accepts. At, she she loves his son no matter what. It's super sweet. Yeah, they share a big hug, and and who knows? Maybe Jake might even come to their next movie night. That'd be nice. Nice real first date. Anyway, and then uh, and uh, Devin is watching this movie that I don't know the name of. Of then Devin gets gets his taser out, out and then and then they start are imitating that movie by shutting the blinds, blinds secure in the stuff with wire so they know if Chucky you know, uh, Devin gets a call off from his mom but he denies it. Dude, dude, answer the phone. She's gonna know something's up, man. Anyway, they start having an interesting chat with one another, but in a cute, awkward sort of way, but really nice actually. And this doll that they attach the string to starts twitching and twitching. Show until they know Chucky's in the house. They start looking can where Chucky might have been. Turns out, turns out it came from the chimney. Did it Santa style? Because they, they find because they find footprints in, in the ashes. Then we see Chucky you're looking down on Jake. Like, I can't. I don't know if it's me, but does anyone think that that is not the animatronic? That is just someone dressed up as Chucky. Just me, hopefully, because anyway, he turns on the stove. Jake, it, it destones the stove. Over, uh, Lexi starts looking out the window, but she's in the room with the Chuckmeister. 
Joker. How he is expl how he's trying to convince Ince her to kill Ill Jake. How she says uh, how he says she gets he she gets off on bullying Jake. I mean, has she seen I mean, has he seen the episode two? Ooh, she starts acting, saying that, she, yeah, she's enjoying it. But really, it's just a stalled time while Jake can actually, you know, her, get behind him and tackle him. Um, but thanks to a squeaky floorboard, or Chucky has the upper hand. And and I'm sorry, but I just want to point this out again. That is no way that's the act. That is definitely someone in the suit. I mean, look at him. He's just as Devin's height. He's just as Devin's height. I don't... That is not an animatronic. That is someone in a suit. Anyway, Chucky's on the ground. And he gets right back up. And let me tell you something. This is really scary and cool. Oh. Anyway. And then Devin's mom comes around. And, and then she start, And then Chucky starts tackling her. Yes. Another grown-up. Finally. A gr we've had another grown-up. Look, actually know about Chucky's existence. Except for Karen. Detective Mike. And, uh... Does Jesse and Jane count? Oh, probably. Uh, uh, I guess I guess it's just Detective Mike and Karen who who were the only grown ups that survived and knew about Chucky's existence. But she doesn't last long because because she falls down the stairs and Chucky gets away out of the house. Well, Devin is left. I've seen if his mum's alive, but. She's not, and the episode just ends straight to the credits. No flashbacks, just ends there. Damn, that was pretty heavy. Be like, literally, like, like I really thought the episode was pretty cool. Actually, the effects were pretty good, and even the parts where you see the doll as like, as just a guy in a suit. It, although it was pretty obvious, still pretty funny. The, the uh, the emotional parts like with Junior and his mom really really went really was t tugging on the heartstrings things and the part where uh, you know Devin and his mom were hugging again was really sweet and I really did like the flashback at with Tiff and Chuck uh, we don't see a lot of the Chucky doll in this move in this episode mostly just possessed sneaker and flashbacks. Actually, we only see him straight at the end, so this is the one where we don't see Chucky and doll form the most. But all in all, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Sucks that Devin's mom is, is now in the land of the deadies. He's, at least she'll be with Junior's mom. Um, so that's good, I guess, in a way, or something. I don't know, I'm just trying to be nice. I, this was a pretty good episode. And the next and the next review of me up doing this episode doing the next episode comes out tomorrow. So like, subscribe, hit notification. And I'll see you guys next time. Heidi freaking out.